What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, John, and welcome back to Gearbox. So today, we have a little bit different of a video for you guys. You know, typically, we're talking about cars or trucks as a whole, you know, as a unit, or we're doing an install, or we're talking about the car industry, so on and so forth. But today, I wanted to get a little more granular as I am driving home from work and start talking about a pretty specific topic. Now, obviously, by the title and thumbnail of this video, you know that we're talking about truck tires. Now, you know, really with this topic at hand, you know, I feel like the vast majority of people, or maybe not the vast majority of people, but a good amount of people, you know, when you get into trucks and you buy your first truck and, you know, you do this, you do that, or even just thinking about buying a truck, a lot of people are automatically going to gravitate toward the idea of either a lift or a leveling kit on their truck and subsequently going for a more aggressive tire setup than a radial, you know, street tire, right? And with that and with my truck, obviously I followed the same route, right? I uh, got the truck, love the truck in stock form, but you know, after a little bit, you want to change lighting, you want to change, um, you know, trim pieces, blah, 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 blah. And then you get to the point where you're like, all right, now it's time for me to go some big boy mods. Now it's time for me to get a suspension lift, get some wheels, get some tires, and the list goes on and on. Um, and, and really with that being said, guys, uh, for those who don't remember, um, my truck is currently on a Rancho 3-inch suspension lift. This is a 2019 uh, Ford F-150 XLT. Uh, so you got the 3-inch suspension lift. We're on Method MR305s, I believe, are the wheels. And we are on Toyo AT3 Open Country tires. So AT meaning all-terrain. They're 35 inch tires um, and they are the stock width of tire. And, you know, over the past, God, I probably got this thing lifted a couple months, you know, six, seven, eight months ago, something like that. With the time I have had behind the wheel of this truck, you know, in its lifted state with the wheels, with the tires. I truly believe that the AT3, you know, Toyo tire has to be one of the best, if not the best, wheel on the market to throw on your truck or SUV uh, when it comes to giving a more aggressive look and, you know, also increasing its capabilities on non-paved surfaces. So to get into some of the points and reasons why I feel this way, uh, I want to start from a pretty minor base and then work our way up. Um, and to kind of introduce that thought for the first point is just the overall look of them. Um, you know, I, I was looking for a tire that primarily looking at all terrain versus like a mud terrain or something like that. Um, but I also wanted them to not only, you know, have that functionality and serve a more specific purpose, but I also wanted them to look good, right? Um, I, you know, there are some scenarios when dealing with cars and trucks and, you know, modifications and, and that type of stuff that, you know, functionality is more important than uh, looks. But at the same time, you know, for something like your wheels and tires, I would argue that that's a pretty important aesthetic piece of your vehicle. And uh, so whether we're talking about the actual tread pattern, whether we're talking about the sidewall profile, or whether we're talking about just the overall kind of dimensions and, and ratio of the 35, you know, AT3 that I have on all four corners of this truck, I think it looks great. And it's one of those things where you know, when you're looking at it, yes, you know right off the bat that it's a, a 35 inch tire and not a 27 radial like it comes, you know, from factory with, but it's not overly aggressive or overly ridiculous in either size or appearance to where you would suspect anything super duper crazy. 
Um, and that's something that I like about it. Um, and I think that's maybe a theme, you know, if you've been on my channel for a while, whether we're talking about the truck, whether we're talking about the WRX, I am a fan of more of an OEM plus type of application to modifications and not necessarily going crazy. And what I mean by that is, you know, you take a look at this modification or that modification and you definitely know that the car or truck is modified in some way, shape or form, but you don't necessarily think it looks like out of place, right? And so all that being said, I, I do think the AT3, um, you know, open country tires look phenomenal. And that's definitely a big reason why I chose to go the Toyo route. Now, the second reason why I decided to go the Toyo open country route is just the fact that it is an all-terrain tire. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, you know, I was primarily looking at all-terrain tires, but did consider some mud terrain or, or maybe some more aggressive tread patterns. Um, but ultimately, what I decided on with all of these factors we're talking about today is that, you know, the AT or all-terrain tread patterns are going to give you the most... I guess realistic tread pattern when it comes to my daily use of my truck and what I mean by that is 98% of what I do and will continue to do in this truck is commuting to and from work or doing road trips or whatever but I also want and have had the ability to you know go hunting or go off-roading or even if it's something as simple as just wet grass that we're driving on. Um, it's going to perform a hell of a lot better than your radial street tread counterparts that we throw on trucks, and that's okay, right? Um, now, the one big downside, I guess, of running a more aggressive tread like this, as some of you guys probably know, is really twofold. One is going to be the actual tread wear on your tires, right? An all-terrain tire is designed for all-terrain. It is not meant for constant, constant asphalt, concrete, whatever driving, which because of that engineering design, it's naturally going to lead to somewhat quicker deterioration of the tread itself. Now, for us truck people, or maybe some of you guys who have gone uh, the AT or MT route, you know that tire wear is an inevitable thing, especially when you're talking about a truck like mine that I take on road trips like mine that I do primarily, you know, black top driving. And that's just a necessary evil that you're going to have to live with having the trade-off of looks and some functionality in, in some regard, but also maybe a little bit more of a lack of practicality uh, or, I guess, economical, you know, cost-effective factors as well. Um, but with that being said, another reason uh, that I went with this Toyo, you know, this specific Toyo tire is road noise. Um, this truck... I don't know if this is more of a suspension thing. I mean, it definitely is a tire thing, but the road noise on this truck is like non-existent. And like, I mean, we're driving home from work right now. You can't hear anything as far as tread noise. Yeah, you hear, you know, some bumps in the roads and, and this and that, but like, you know, if I were have to gone with a more aggressive mud terrain tire, the road noise would probably be unbearable. And that is one mistake I made, if you guys remember, if you've been around for a while, when I had my 1987 Ford Ranger, I went and bought some piece of shit, Chinesium mud terrain tires to throw on that truck. I mean, it was a piece of shit truck, it was an off-road truck, so like the, ter the you know, tread pattern made sense, but I would still drive it to work and I'd drive it to go get groceries and stuff sometimes and that road noise was awful. This truck has zero. And maybe that's attributed some to engineering and sound detonating and all that sort of stuff, but you know, if you're rocking with a similar platform truck as mine, I am here to tell you that you do not 
have to worry about road noise. It is actually silent. Maybe if you get above like 85 miles an hour, not to say that I've ever done that or I have any experience with that, but a little birdie told me that that is possible. But you know, from a road tripping perspective, if you're going a little bit faster at highway speeds, maybe you will develop some road noise. But from your day-to-day -day driving and standard driving, we'll call it, there's no such thing as road noise with these things. And that is a huge blessing. Uh, it just makes the ride that much more smooth, that much more enjoyable. And, uh, you know, overall a reason why I decided to go with the all-terrain tread versus a mud terrain tread. Now, as we're on this topic of tires, I do want to let you guys in on a secret. Some of y'all might call it a negative of this tire, and that's okay. As good as some things might be, shit's not perfect, and that's okay. Um, but the one downfall I have had with this tire, and it hasn't been very often, and it's in very specific, I guess, settings. I don't even know what else to call it. But, of course, when you're going to an all-terrain tire, uh, the reason that it is, the reason that it is all-terrain is, you know, you have more knobby tread, you have more area to actually grip the grass, the dirt, the gravel, whatever, and, you know, as opposed to your radial, your street radial, um, that contact patch to the blacktop is about as optimal as it possibly could be all-terrain mud terrains are not and with that being said when it has rained like biblical amounts of rain and either you're you know turning at a slow speed and it's a tight turn or maybe you're going up a hill and the car behind you is driving 10 miles an hour under the speed limit and you're you're in between gears basically so you're at a high rpm coupled with the fact, which every truck driver knows, beds of trucks are extremely light. Trucks are not good in snow or slippery conditions because they're light in the rear. Um, you slip a little bit. And it's something that I knew was going to, I guess, rear its head at some point. Uh, but I was up in Ohio a couple weeks ago visiting family and um, it was raining like crazy. I mean, it was insane. And we were driving this truck through the hills of Ohio and we were fishtailing like insane. And I'm like, holy shit. Of course, my wife is like, John, what are you doing? Why can't you drive? And I'm like, babe, not now. <laughs> like, chill the fuck out. Um, but it's just something to consider. But I don't necessarily put that as a fault to Toyo or to the Open Country AT3s. I think that's just an inherent risk you run while running all-terrain or mud-terrain tires. It's a simple scientific equation, however that might be, of friction of a lesser contact patch versus a street tire in wet conditions, which are inherently creating less friction than dry asphalt will. Point blank period. That's it. Um, so that is something I did want to mention. It's not the biggest issue ever. I do live in South Carolina. It really doesn't rain a whole heck of a lot. You know, if you live in Seattle or Chicago or I, I don't know, if you live in a city that rains a lot and you don't feel confident in your driving skill, maybe don't do it. I don't know. Uh, do as you wish, I guess. But I'm here as a public service announcement to tell you it is something that I've experienced but overall, the pros significantly outweigh the cons, and so here we are. But anyway, guys, that is going to do it for another episode of Gearbox. If you enjoyed the topic today and you like to get a little more specific into specific brands or specific pieces of the puzzle when it comes to building a truck or a car and talking through that, let me know. I, I've enjoyed this video. I think it's a nice little switch up. Um, it's something that we've never really done before. 
but there's definitely a hell of a lot of potential uh, to have more conversations like this. So if you like it, drop a comment down below. That's going to give me the ideas and the willingness to actually have these conversations with y'all. Um, as always, hit a big fat thumbs up if you like the video. And 100%, if you're at this point in the video and you haven't already done this, shame on you. But for those who are unaware, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell to get notified every time we post a video here on Gearbox. And that is going to do it for today. I hope you all wonderful people have a great rest of your day, a great week ahead, and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs> 